Asheville Beer Week continues. Aaron, the head brewer for French Broad, is with us today. And you, you might be wondering why we have the beers set up in such a manner. We're going to spin to win today. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we are. Yeah. And the web mistress Jessica, who is filming this, will let her have some. I'll tell you what, I'll let you do the honors. All right. You spin the Sharpie, and we shall drink where it lands with the black tip. All right. Let's see what we got here. I, it, it looks like we're going to be trying this one here, the Gateway like Colch. It looks Kulch closest to the Gateway Colch, and a good time of the year for the Gateway Colch, too, with Perfect. the weather getting warmer. We'll talk about all your beers, but uh, tell us about the Gateway Colch, which we're about to drink right now. A lot of people are familiar with the style, some people are not. Well, <clears throat> Colch in general is a light German ale that comes specifically from Cologne, Germany. Mm -hmm. So this is in the style of Kolsch. Um, this one is very much to style. It's a uh, light German ale, 5.3%. Uh, goes great on a hot summer day. Some people would consider it a lawnmower beer. Mm -hmm. um, and just, it's a, a really loved uh, light craft beer uh, around Asheville during the summertime. You know, it's, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> Not sucking up, it is, and I've told other people this, it's one of my favorites. And especially as we get to this time of the year because of what you just described, it's perfect. It's lower in alcohol because a lot of craft beers six seven eight nine and up it's true so it's hard to get a lot of flavor in a lower alcohol beer but you guys have done it with the gateway Kolsch. yeah you know it's it's a beer that you know for your saturday drinker that wants to start early and drink late it's it's really the perfect <laughs> beer for that and uh, yeah. you know on the river um or out out and about <clears throat> it's a great beer um i was saying uh to you guys earlier we are going to be canning soon and uh, Gateway Kolsch is going to be in uh, one of the first beers that we can um, as well. So I'm even more excited about that for you know being able to have it out in nature and not have to have the bottle because there's so many places that cans can go that glass you know it's not festivals it's not supposed to go camping <clears throat> yeah rafting. You'll notice uh, those of you that are watching the video the light color uh, very reminiscent of a lager or a pilsner in the color. So very crisp and refreshing like those. Uh, Kolsch is something that until recently, at least when I say that 10 years or so, most people were not too familiar with. But right. it seems like many brewers now are, are trying to attack the Kolsch style because of the popularity. And it's still a style that a lot of your, your drinking public uh, might not know. You know, mm -hmm. definitely more people are familiar with the Pilsner. Um, the beauty of the Kolsch is it's an ale yeast <clears throat> versus a lager yeast. So you don't have to go through the lagering process and you're able to... Um, produce a nice clean light ale in about a third of the time that you can do a lager so cheers my friend cheers everything you just described crisp and delicious uh, light enough to enjoy several but still some flavor in there yeah yeah and and right on the end you can you get a little touch of the Kolsch yeast mm -hmm. um, that really uh, sticks out and and describes the beer. Uh, the warmer that you ferment a Kolsch, the uh, the more of that late flavor that comes out. So this one's fermented a uh, fairly lower level of temperature to, to kind of imitate a more Pilsner-esque body. Aaron from French Broad Brewery is with us now. Let's get the nuts and bolts of French Broad for people that maybe have just moved to the area that aren't familiar. Asheville's always getting a lot of visitors and, and newbies, you know, people moving to the area and staying here. And the beer scene is so impressive. It takes them a while to catch up, quite frankly. I, I've got people that live in much larger cities with much less access to good beer. So tell them about French Broad, where you guys came from, how long you've been around. Well, <clears throat> we've been in business, it'll be 13 years um, at the beginning of December. And uh, we're located at 101D Fairview Road, which is just across from Moe's mm -hmm. over in the Biltmore Village. Um, we have our tasting room, which operates every day of the week from 1 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And we also have free music Fridays, Saturdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. The tasting room is fun. It's a real casual type place to go. It's almost, um, almost a, a hip type place because, you know, the, the other places have maybe the shiny toy and whatnot. But for the true beer drinker that just wants to go enjoy some delicious beers, take their friends there, and not have to worry about the paparazzi, uh, <laughs> maybe French Broad's a place to go. I'm sure you'd prefer a lot more people would come, however, though, because it's a great place. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a really quaint tasting room. It's one thing that I really love about it is that feel. 
Um, and it's grown. The music's really special and, there. And it's grown. I remember when it first opened. Yeah, like three tables. Oh yeah, three tables and a jockey <laughs> was, box. That was pretty much all it was. <laughs> and you know, I think men and women even shared the own bath, their own bath, the, the same bathroom or whatever it was. Yeah, it was a, it yeah, it was a <laughs> one, one bathroom, and so you continue to grow, which is awesome. Yeah, we, you know, we've been expanding, but still, tr you know, staying true to our, staying true to our roots, and um, and not losing that feel um, that is synonymous with French broad, but just kind of. Um, maybe amplifying it a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ha having a, a few more people through, um, pushing a few more beers through, just, um, you know, really, really embracing it. It's, you know, it's such a great beer community here and um, such great beer vacations that happen yeah. for, uh, for tourists that come through. Um, you know, it's, it's it's great for everybody. Well, I did the uh, the brewery tour for my uh, 40th birthday, which was four years ago, and you were one of the, I guess there was only three stops at the time, I yeah. think. That Asheville Brews Cruise? The Asheville Brews Cruise. We started, I believe, at Highland, and then we came down mm -hmm. to French Broad and then moved on to Asheville Brewing Company, oh, I yeah. think, for the finish. I believe now it's expanded more than that. Now they have several different mm -hmm. tours that Options. you can take. Yeah. You can do a downtown walking tour, mm -hmm. you can do... Uh, now there's one that's Pisgah Highland and French Broad. There's yeah, there's a few different options on their website you can take, but uh, it's really great that they branched out and they're you know in, trying to include all the breweries um, and letting people choose where they might want to go. Or uh, they also um, recently they've been doing like a brew bus, which is neat. Mm -hmm. um, it's like five dollars. They'll take you one way. It comes around every hour on like Saturday, so you can hop on and. Um, Pay five bucks, come hang out at French Broad, drink some pints. Uh, when they come back through, if you want to go to uh, Asheville Pizza Company, you can pay five bucks. They'll take you down there. Mm -hmm. An hour later, if you want to go to Altamont in West Asheville, they'll take you over there. It's pretty cool. Um, I think they've just started that up about the past month, but I think it. Uh, I think it's a great option, you know, to be able to enjoy all the great beers in Asheville and not. Uh, not have to drive your car to all of them. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want to be drinking and driving. No, Either get sure. a designated driver or take advantage of one of these these situations yeah. where someone's yeah. driving you around. There's a lot of great services. There really there. is. And now to have survived and thrived for 13 <laughs> years, you guys are obviously doing something right, and that's the beer. It's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, some of my favorites in town are on your line. The We Heavy, the We Heavier. I already mentioned the Gateway Kolsch. The IPA, you'll stand up next to any of them. Uh, and I believe you got the Rye Hopper right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so have you had an opportunity now to start experimenting now that you've been around long and you've been established like a lot of people doing the small barrel stuff how's it going for you guys at that well we do seasonals um mm -hmm. we actually have a seasonal that's coming out um at beer city and we're going to release in the tasting room tomorrow as it'll be the french broad river gold and it's a uh, it's a golden blonde ale mm -hmm. uh, and it's a light easy drinking beer with uh nice hop notes um amarillo on the nose and uh so yeah some west coast hops uh nice golden color but the style would be blonde um you know we wanted something easy drinking for summer um it's gonna some, be 83 degrees on saturday yeah, so <laughs> exactly. something that's a little something that was a little different from the coals we don't want to detract, detract from that yeah so, mm -hmm. um so we're excited about that coming out uh, we do several seasonals throughout the year. We did a barley wine last Christmas, mm -hmm. which is still aging beautifully. And yep. um, so we've got to, you know, we've got to experiment and play like that, and you know, as well as keeping up with production. Um, but as far as barrel aging stuff like that, we do, we have a cask program, uh, and that's about as far as we go in, in those styles. Um, <clears throat> maybe in the future we'll get into doing more of it, but at this point we're more. Concentrating on the the core beers, um, making good seasonals, making sure everything is uh, crisp and clean, and um, you know consistent for the for the drinker, uh, which is I think you know that's that's what I want is consistency uh, when I'm going out to drink. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you, you want to know when you open that beer, it's going to taste like a certain thing, and it's going to be what it delivers. Yeah, you know, every yeah exactly. Time. So uh, so that's been our main focus, and like I said, getting getting the canner up and running. Um, you know, is a whole task in itself. Oh so yeah, that's going to be a summer adventure. <laughs> now, as one of the elder statesmen of the the Asheville beer scene, thirteen years, uh, you're one of the oldest. Uh, when it started to blow up like it did, and I'm not. How long have you been the head brewer there? Um, well, I've been with French Broad. This is my sixth year. Okay, and uh, so about about half the time that they've been opened. I, I, but I've just taken over as head brewer uh, recently. 
But that's about five or six years ago when the scene really started to kick into overdrive. Yeah. And now, when all of that started happening, did you guys have a little bit of uh, anxiousness on the competition and just so many options that might dilute the fan base and you'd have a hard time surviving that? I mean, that'd be my fear, but it seems like it's helped everyone. It seems like it's become so big that so many people are coming and bringing more beer fans with them. Yeah, you know, I think that through things like the Asheville Brewers Alliance, with all the breweries coming together, and the brewers and the owners uh, meeting with each other, it's really helped create uh, a community that has helped everybody. Just like you said, it really has helped everyone. Um, and you know, it's a great community. These are these are friends at other breweries. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you if you run out of uh, a certain kind of hops, you know, you're not necessarily up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> um, you know, you got a you got a couple allies out there that you could call on and say, hey man, you you uh, might be able to help me out today, <laughs> kind of in a, a pinch. And uh, <laughs> and so you know that that's really great. I don't I'm not really sure if it happens um, in other towns like that, but. Uh, I'm sure I'm glad that this, it's like that here because, you know, people are going to drink whatever they want to drink. If if your favorite beer is Pisgah Pale or your favorite beer is Shiva, you know, I mean, you have your your specific drinkers that that's what they drink. If your favorite beer is French Broad IPA, and that's what you drink all the time, and then you know, we're so lucky to to have so much good craft beer around. Sometimes. You know, you want to have a beer from Wicked Weed, you want to have a beer from the pizza company, you want to have a beer from French mm -hmm. Broad, you know. And so that night when you go out, you might go through several different taps. And um, so it, it really just comes down to the drinkers and, uh, you know, the folks that support us. is It's, it's amazing uh, that we're able to sustain such a, a good community of, uh, of brewers and um, and not have that kind of cutthroat competition where, you know, you're, uh, you know, you're always feeling like, oh, well, these guys are out, uh, new breweries are coming in, like, what's going to happen, you know, it's more or less like, oh, it's great, you know, like, with some of the new breweries coming in, uh, Burial and High Wire, you know, I've met some of those guys, and the guys from Burial are super nice, mm -hmm. and they're going the whole, you know, Belgian direction, and... I, you know, I think it's great. Um, They'll be just, here tomorrow. It'll actually, just add so more to, I'm the, looking forward uh, to, try. to the community. Yeah. yeah, you know, a good healthy competition actually brings everything up a level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to, you know, you want to make good beers because your friends are going to be mm -hmm. trying them. And, you, well, of course you want to you want to <laughs> make good beer anyway. But, you yeah. know, it, it adds to it. I think it does add, add something to and it. And you're, you're going to have a neighbor pretty soon. We, we spoke with uh, Catawba Brewing Company. They're going to be right across the street, I guess, from yeah. you guys. So it, that could actually help in a way now that people have... No, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think it can hurt. Um, mm -hmm. They are going to be doing more like barrel aid stuff, more kind of specialty stuff. Um, so I think it will be, you know, it'll it'll help make it more of a destination, you know, as far as, um, well, there's two breweries. We can hit both of them on this side of town. We can pop up to Highland and then we can head back downtown or we can, you know, go wherever from there. But having the two of us and then Highland right down the street, I don't think that they're... I don't think that could hurt at all. <laughs> I had a friend of mine visit not too long ago, and I asked him what he wanted to do, and he lived here for years, but not after the beer scene had really gotten to where it is now. And he says, let's do a mini brewery tour. And so I'm like, okay, let's map it out. So we started looking at where we're going to go. So we went to, uh, went to French Broad and Highland and Pisgah, and then we came back around and went to Wicked Wheat. And, it, you know, four different breweries, and everybody doing something a little bit different. That's, that's mm -hmm. part of the beauty of it as well. It is, yeah. Yeah, you get something a little different in every brewery, and you know every brewery has their, you know their specialties and really their their flavor profile. That even you know through all the different styles, mm -hmm. there's that flavor profile, that certain something that's always there. Kind of like you know you always know a, a Jimi Hendrix guitar when you hear it. It's like <laughs> there's, it, that's that way in breweries. There's like that common thread that kind of runs unspokenly through through the beers that you're like, oh yeah, this is a a French broad beer. This is a wicked weed beer, and you know um, <clears throat> it's hard to describe even what it is. But there's that that one that one common thread that lies there that uh, kind of ties the whole catalog together. And the one thing they all have in common is they're all good. Otherwise, they wouldn't survive in a market like this. It's, it's like true. you go to a, you go to a city that's famous for restaurants. 
Well, guess what? If it's not a good restaurant, it's not going to be there next time you visit. That's right. Because the competition is so stiff. Uh, we've only lost one, really, mm -hmm. uh, Craggy, in the time that the beer scene has gotten to be where it is. And we may lose another along the way. As there's more and more, the numbers game might push someone else to the side. But, right. you know, then others will even come. And the, the competition will keep bringing the level up and you keep you on your toes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got, you got to stay on your game. Let's get, can't get lazy. <laughs> no, certainly not. Let's try another beer. I know sure. you're still working on yours. Yeah, that's fine. I but uh, <laughs> we've got uh, 13 Rebels, we've got the IPA, and we've got the Rye Hopper. I'm going to spin the uh, Wheel of Fun here All and right. see what we got. Looks like the IPA Looks it like is. the IPA it is. Going to crack this one open, which is my favorite style of beer generally. I like the hops. I do too. And this is a delicious uh, example of it. The French Broad IPA. Perfect example of it, actually. Very well balanced. Very nice hop profile. A really enjoyable beer. Some people, and I've been known to as well, uh, you know, the doubles, Imperials, they're nice. But the problem with those is you can't drink too much of them. I'm sure. I mean, that's kind of you got home for the day and you're going to have one. Yeah. Or, or two. I mean, or one 22 ounce bottle and then you're good. But if you want to. Have some fun with your buddies and go out for the night. You better back off of those because... That's right. That's right. You're not going to make it very long. <laughs> the IPA, how long has this been around? Uh, the IPA has been around just uh, just over a year, maybe about a year and a half. Um, it's a it's a great uh, example of mm -hmm. an aroma, an aroma-packed IPA. Uh, most of the hops are <clears throat> on the aroma edition. Mm -hmm. um, only about 60 IBUs, so it's... You know, it's not toting any 90, 100 IBU. It's not overly of, hopped like some uh, people, let's say Dogfish Head, for example. You know, it's not a 120 or something along those lines. And I think that that also helps, um, you know, with the drinkability. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, I really like the, uh, I really like mm -hmm. some of the, the really big hoppy, high IBU mm -hmm. IPAs as well. It's one of my favorite styles. Um, but, you know, it really bites you right in the jaw joint there and just gets your mouth watering when... You taste a, a very, very hoppy beer when when the hop notes are more early or are, are earlier in the boil. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this, you know, it, you, you'll notice it doesn't really it doesn't really get you too much right there. Um, no, it smells in, great. In the jaw, mm -hmm. but the hoppiness is definitely there. It's more in the back of the palate, tongue, um, sides of the tongue, and. Uh, goes down a lot easier than the ones like say a Hoptimum or something, you know, it's just way overly hop, which are also good, which is the beauty of it. You've got an IPA, but you've got so many different kinds of IPAs yeah. out there. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, there's a, there's a different IPA for every drinker, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there really is. And yeah. for any occasion. Yeah, and you can always find that, uh, you know, you can always find your style. It might take practice. <laughs> well, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you. Aaron from French Broad Brewing Company here, and we thank you for bringing all the delicious beverages by. Looks like we'll get to share a couple with the webmistress. She'll get to enjoy Absolutely. a few. Absolutely. <laughs> she was hoping we wouldn't drink all of these, you understand? Well, she well was, we, brought, we brought, brought back up. <laughs> Please leave some for me, she's saying. And thank you for coming by. We'll look forward to seeing you at, at uh, Beer City on Saturday. Uh, which ones can we uh, see there? You're going to have the, the new one you released. Yeah, you we're going to have the, uh, the French Broad River Gold. Uh, we'll have the IPA, mm -hmm. we'll have the Kolsch, of course, nice hot day, mm -hmm. and um, we'll have the We Heavier, and possibly the 13 Rebels. Wow, quite a few. And we'll also have a cask, it'll either be ESB with uh, Mosaic Hops, or a cask of IPA that's been dry hopped uh, with Mosaic as well. So. You know, the only problem I have with the Beer City Festival is there's so many good beers to try. You've really got to pace yourself. It's true. It's true. You, you don't want to. You don't want to go getting, uh, you know, too many too many high gravities up front. Yeah. You know, you save the high save gravities for the, for end, the end of the, end the, of the day. That's the way to do it. You know? Make sure you got a driver and. Yep. Start light. Get your favorite cabbie's number. And stay hydrated. Yep. That's one thing I have learned it's over true. the years is don't ignore the water. I mean, be drinking some water during the whole thing, get some food in you, and you'll enjoy the festival a whole lot more. Well, that's absolutely right. And you'll enjoy your next day a whole lot more. <laughs> that's, a, that's a true story there. And if my uh, minister happens to be watching, I'm sorry, I won't be there Sunday morning. I'm just going to let you know right now, probably not going to make it to church this weekend. A little preemptive strike there, because yep. I'll be at the Call, Beer City Festival on Saturday. Calling it in now. <laughs> <laughs> going to go ahead and do that. Aaron, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. We appreciate you.